No orchestral sketch today, but a walkthrough through the score of Innocent Love, my latest orchestral music track. If you haven't listened to it yet, it's on the channel and links should appear somewhere right now. It's also available on every major streaming platform like Apple Music and Spotify. So if you like it, don't forget to add it to your playlist. Links are in the video description. Also in the video description, a link to a free download to the score of Innocent Love. Great for sight reading and any other further analysis. And of course, great to use when watching this video while we go through the score. If you support me on Patreon, you can also download the raw MIDI file which I have exported out of StaffPad. Hi there, this is David, also known as Ghost Rider. What I want to do in this video is talk you through the score, touch some concepts like motives, patterns and orchestration. But be aware I didn't write this composition with these theoretical concepts in mind. But looking back at it with these insights are great for a better understanding of what's actually happening. Let's concentrate on this first part. This is all about printing in the main motive of the music track. I talked about it many times in my videos. We humans are seeking patterns. It's in our nature. Patterns gives us comfort. They help us, in this case, understand the music and that we're able to follow along. This is the motive the entire composition has been based on. Let's listen to it. It repeats throughout the composition and we know repetition makes recognition stronger. Rule of thumb, you need more repetition when your motive is more complex, keep that in mind. But repeating the same exact thing over and over again becomes boring, so there are some derivations of the main motive in the composition to keep it interesting. Think about a shortened version of the motive or one with more notes, for example, Break a quarter note up into more notes. Think about counterpoint, second species and third species counterpoint. Now it's up to you if you want to do any further analysis of the motive in this score. If you're planning to do that, I advise you to print out the score and encircle all the parts with the motive or a derivation of it. And by the way, it's great to do this exercise with other music too. Search for motive and pay attention to the repetition. Solitarius, the track from Laurie Jean and Lazy Pixel is a great example of good use of a strong motive. If you have followed me along, during the orchestral sketches you already heard me talking about counterpoint, intervals and motion. Complex concepts, but also great ones. Let's look at this section from out of these concepts. From the perspective of motion, this section moves downwards and follows a certain pattern. Let me encircle a couple of notes so you can see what I mean. Did I do this on purpose? Well, yes and no. Not at the beginning of writing, but when I noticed this pattern, I started to utilize it more and more, knowing it would work out well, cause our brains will pick it up. They kind of foresee where the music goes and that gives comfort and a connection with the music. When we take notice of the intervals, you will see that I aimed for thirds, sixths and tenths to get a rich and full harmonic sound using the different instruments with their own unique timbre within a range they love to play. I didn't sketch out this composition on the piano first like I do on the orchestral sketches, but I could have done that. And maybe that's a great exercise to do, transcribing this orchestral composition to piano only. It's just an idea. When looking at counterpoint, I played safe in this composition, to be honest. Nothing wrong with that. I used one species and second species counterpoint the most. Alright, lots to take in for now. 
Let's listen to this part and pay special attention to the motion and the harmony. When I started writing this composition, I had strings only in mind. A romantic music track with a conversation between the violins and the cellos. But suddenly it evolved to more, and that happens to me quite often to be honest. I start with an idea and creativity takes over the focus I started with. And is that bad, is that wrong? Well not per se, but if you're working on a paid project with a clear assignment, I guess it won't help you. Orchestration is in its simplest meaning choosing the right instruments for the story that you want to tell. Now I was after a sweet romantic sound. Strings and woodwinds are my friends for that. The beginning of the composition is for the strings, with quite soon in it a doubling in octaves with the flute and the violins one, with a subtle oboe that comes in and plays the main motive in the background. Let's listen to that. I stick to this approach until I reached a second part in the composition. Now I don't know what this part does to you and how you visualize it, but I had some playful chasing in mind in an old castle, ending with the two main characters holding each other. Yeah, something like that. So I needed much more excitement. That's the reason I added trills, tremolo, cymbals and went from smooth legato to fast play staccato in the woodwinds and spiccato in the strings. Important to address, besides adding this excitement and some percussion, I stayed with the same orchestral sections as before, woodwinds and string. Now let's listen to this part and try to visualize, sketch out your story that you relate to this part. At the end, the main motive repeats, and I work towards the cadence to resolve, with some fast violas in the background to keep that little excitement out of the second part. Doubled with a vibraphone, which I think enriches the sound with great quality. Let's do a quick listening. I hope you enjoyed this score walkthrough, if you did give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, ding that bell if you want to be notified when I upload a new video about how to write music, orchestral music for film and video, orchestration and any other related topics. Alright, I hope to see you next week with another one.